So hello, welcome one and all to what is certainly in terms of international football in Latin America, the ultimate grudge match. Two absolute superpowers who also happen to be neighbours on a continent widely recognised as football's home. It is a rivalry that has a history which lasts well over a century and has of course been ranked top of all footballing rivalries by media and supporters alike. It comes as little surprise then that this game is considered to be international football's equivalent of the Super Classico. The 11 of Brazil, the 11 of Argentina, some of them friends, many foes in club football lining up for a united cause. It is quite a sight to behold, a massive sea of yellow and green and blue, the colours of the Brazilian flag. The national anthem of Argentina rings out. Well, that has got the juices flowing, and now this. Well, they call this a friendly, but the crowd clearly doesn't think so. No, in actual fact, the way. Well, in games of this nature, as a player, Peter, you only want to work as hard as demanded. You don't want to have to go at it full pelt. But when the opposition is what it is, all of that kind of goes out the window. The challenge here will ask more of you, and so both teams will, will wish to, to give more than they take. It's one of those games, Peter, where if the opposition increase their effort, you have to follow it. So that's got things on the way. Who do you, Jim, see making the difference here? Yeah, Nicholas Otamendi. He's a, a fine defender, both in the air and on the ground, and a, a real tough competitor who, who loves a physical duel. He knows how to pick out a pass too, and... Real chance! And it's a goal! It's hardly a surprise, is it? That's what we're here for, a player with this wonderful knack of being able to show up and deliver at important times. Yet, yet another example. Simplicity itself. That's just a great finish, but it's down to very clever movement. You can see this has been obviously worked on on the training ground he knew exactly where he wanted the ball and it all came good big occasion big goal crucial lead because of that first goal now it's a great opportunity to make it one-way traffic and add to this lead and it's Di Maria Intercepted, really alert to the danger. There has been just the early goal here, and the score is 1 0. Di Maria. <laughs> Lucas Paqueta. And it's played forward. Otamendi cuts it out.
Di Maria. Di Maria. Oh, that is lovely footwork. Tries to pick out a teammate. Oh, that's a foul, and the whistle's gone. And he has shown him a yellow card. The player's protesting furiously, but there's little or no sympathy from the ref. Knocks it away. It's a good run down the right. Where could this lead? He's made good progress from a deep position. Talia Fico. Martinez. Is that a foul? Yes, the uh, referee's given it. It is a fantastic goal! About as smooth as it gets! They have hauled themselves right back into it! Dispatched expertly, nicely done. First half is done, what well, it has been an even contest as the scoreline suggests and it has been more than decent to watch. Brazil head into the dressing room after a half in which we've seen two goals, one each, and the game right on edge. And that's the second half started. Changes made by neither side from what we understand. Battles to win it back. And it's Di Maria. Floats one over. Well read, he sorted that out. Whipped in. Of accuracy. Messi. It's come loose. Decent looking ball. Big chance. Must be. Otamendi. was good pressing, forced the error to put an end to it before things could get even more threatening. Keeper's got good distance on that. Lucas Paqueta. He's through. Cut out in the nick of time. Look, this can still go either way. It might be flowing one way, but there's still time for some ebb. And it's messy. Gets it back. Concentration levels are very good, and so is the commitment. This game could yet yield a winner. <laughs> it's an untidy challenge. Free kick given. The referee has resisted the temptation to go to his pocket. It's just a stern lecture.
couple of changes then in quick succession. Yeah, it's pretty obvious as to who was going to be taken off. His energy levels began to, to sag, and he was never going to last until the final whistle. Tries to get it clear. Drilled in low. And that has been clocked away. You wonder if that's it now, but there may be one more opportunity, Peter, for a late, late steal here. And there goes the final whistle. So nothing between them after all of that, and you can't really argue with the result. Now the manager too unhappy with the outcome, and the fans really well entertained. It's all square in the end. So... <laughs>
we survey the stands of the Maracanã. What a sight it is, a terrific sight, awash with colour, as always has been the case. Well, this is the perfect game for all parties, not least the neutrals who've just come to enjoy it. Yes, Peter, it's a shame it's only a, a friendly, but then again, that may help us see a more expressive attacking contest. And I'd be prepared to settle for a, a clash of, of lesser intensity in favour of, of lots of flair, skill and plenty of tricks and a few goals. I suspect I've probably overstretched my, my level of greed here. Well, if you did just miss it, we are up and running already. Jim, which player is best equipped for this game? Yeah, Jordan Pickford. He's a great all-round goalkeeper, Peter. Uh, great at shot-stopping and dominant in his box. He also gets counter-attacks going with his accurate long passes. The opposition should be a little wary of committing too many men forward to attack because if it does break down, this guy can get them in trouble pretty quickly. Yes, he'd be my pick too. It's going to be all about how they get the best out of him. Tony Kroos.